First Samuel chapter number 17. First Samuel chapter number 17. I want to read First Samuel chapter number 17. And I'm going to um, take a skip over. And I'm going to go through 4 through 10. And then 38 through 43. And I'm going to begin reading for the sake of time. This is a familiar passage of Scripture. It's David and Goliath, but I'm going to ask you not to tune me out because you think you know this story. I'm going to assume that what you've learned is not incorrect, but it's incomplete. And I want to complete the totality of your understanding about a passage of Scripture that most individuals who read the Old Testament don't take culture into consideration and oftentimes miss the meaning of a text because they don't fully understand the text because they never grew up in the culture of the text. In 1 Samuel chapter number 17, verse number 4, it says, A champion named Goliath, who was from Gath, came out of the Philistine camp. His height was six feet, six cubits in a span. He was about nine feet tall. He had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of scale armor of bronze, weighing 5,000 shekels. On his legs, he wore bronze greaves, bronze javelins were slung on his back. His spear was a shaft like a weaver's rod. He had an iron point weighing 600 shekels. His shield bearer went ahead of him. Read that importantly. His shield bearer went what? His shield bearer went what? Ahead of him. Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, why do you come out and line up and battle me? Am I not a Philistine, and are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man and have him come down to me. If he is able to fight and kill me, we will be your subjects. But if I overcome him and kill him, you will become one of the subjects to serve us. So here it is, verse 38. So now this war is happening. They're trying to split the kingdom of Saul into two. And they're standing between a river, and they're all scared to fight because they don't want to go through the river. So how they fought in that culture was, you send your best person, I'll send my best person, and whoever wins, wins the war. So now, Goliath is nine feet tall, has all of this armor on, and is calling them out, and all of them are scared. And here it is, verse 38. Here comes this young man that comes ready to offer himself up. They couldn't get anybody. It got so bad that Saul was like, listen, y'all, if I can get somebody to fight, I'll give you uh, free taxes. I'll give you my daughter, and y'all can make merry, but I need somebody to fight for us because ain't none of us about that life. And so all of a sudden, they begin to talk amongst themselves, and in verse 38, David shows up and his brother's like, verse 35, his brother shows up and says this, like, why are you even here? You should be in the field. And David says, can I at least say something? Y'all are always jumping down my throat. Whenever I want to say something, y'all don't ever give me a chance. And then he says, in verse, he tells Saul, listen, let me fight. Saul's like, you don't want this type of fight. He says, man, listen, I've been fighting lions and bears and, and tigers. I've destroyed them in the field with my father. He says, give me a chance. And Saul's like, all right, man, if, if this is what you want, then this is what I'm going to give you. Then verse 38 says, then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and bronze helmet on his head. David fastened on his sword over the tunic and tried walking around because he was not used to them. I cannot go in these, he said to Saul, because I'm not used to them. So he took them off. So he took off. He took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag. With his sling in his hand, approached the Philistine. Meanwhile, the Philistine, with his shield bearer in front of him, kept coming closer to David. He looked at David over and saw that he was little and more than a boy, glowing with health and handsome. He despised him. He said to David, am I a dog that you would come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David's God. And it says that David runs, takes his slingshot, hits Goliath in the forehead. He falls. He takes Goliath's sword and chops off his head. 
I want to talk just from a little subject. My giant is sick. As a subtitle, I like to use the art of fighting giants. Beloved, yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift. That's why we call it the present. I've discovered in this familiar passage of scripture that perhaps many of you have not considered when interpreting David and Goliath. I'd like to introduce you to what Malcolm Gladwell writes, David and Goliath, Underdogs and Misfits. My subject, of course, is my giant is sick, but my premise is all about the art of fighting giants. You know, there are many giants that we fought in 2008. They also have cousins, too. Some of their cousins are called doubt. They're called sickness, called cancer, poverty, racism, inequality, depression, divorce, teenage depression, and even teenage pregnancy. One thing is for sure, no matter what economics you are, no matter what educational system you went through, you and I cannot avoid facing giants. We all will face giants even in 2019, lest the Lord tarry. I would hate to tell you that God is going to do this and that and this and that and not also let you know that God will do things in your life, but there will also be giants that you'll have to fight. This, this fight that was happening was interesting because it was a war that was taking place and, and nobody knew who was going to help them win. And all of a sudden, there, there comes this young boy that trying to make a name for himself. And he says, I, I want to step up and fight Goliath. And all of a sudden, Saul says, no, you're too young, number one. And, and David recognizes something pretty profound that your age does not stop you from standing on certain stages. It doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't matter how young you are, you are never disqualified to do what God has instructed for you to do with your life. It is very important that you and I understand this premise that God in his infinite wisdom was calling a man who looked like he could not win. It's one thing to be on the basketball court and they pick Shaq and then you end up picking a four foot 11 person trying to play against Shaq. That's exactly what was happening. But here's the thing that David had. He did not have the outward appearance of being victorious, but he had a God on the inside of him that let him know that there is no battle that's bigger than what I have seen. Because most of us don't realize the giants that you're facing look big, but when you really study them, some of the giants that you face in your past are bigger than what you're facing right now. But giants like to intimidate us by making us feel like they are a greater threat to us than what we recognize and if you study this passage out very clearly we oftentimes refer to it as David being afraid of Goliath there's nowhere in this text that David was afraid there's nowhere in this text that David even felt like he was going to lose when they told him that you need to back off he was like wait a minute I don't fought a whole lot of bears out there I don't fought lions back there this guy is not a threat to me he may be a threat to you because you haven't been through what I have been through and you haven't fought what I have fought and if you've been where I've been you would understand that this is just another day in my life and all of a sudden we find that this 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 beautiful beautiful young man says well let me ask you a question um, I know that this guy is a giant and I know this conflict is is pretty bad and if I lose he could end up cutting my head in front of all of y'all I am aware of that if I lose he's gonna cut my head in front of all of y'all and hang it up and tell everybody this was your warrior as a black panther is this your king and all of a sudden he says I'm gonna go ahead and fight him because God prepares me privately before he introduces me publicly and there are a lot of us that are missing out on the reality that God has been 
preparing you all along to fight some of the giants that you will face in 19. You fought them in 14. You fought them in 13. You fought them in 12. Some of you been through your parents divorcing and you thought that you would be a statistic and you made it. Some of you been in jail and you still made a reputation for yourself. Some of you did not believe that God could even redeem your soul and God found you when you did not want to be found. And here's the reality. The giants that come after you come after to intimidate you because if they can get you to be afraid of them, they can immobilize your faith. And David proves a very important lesson that our faith follows our soul. If your soul is weak, if your spirit is weak, your faith will be weak. If your faith is weak, your decisions will be weak. I can tell the capacity or the health of your spirit by the decisions that you make. And David said, no, I ain't got a problem. I know that God has called me to fight this battle. And all of a sudden, he goes and looks at Goliath, and Goliath is calling him. And he's saying, you're not able to beat me. And here's the thing. You and I need to stop telling our mind negative things because eventually our mind's going to believe it. Everything that they said to David was negative, but every time they said something negative to him, he gave them a history lesson on where he came from. You're not good enough, but you do know I've been fighting bears all my life. You know you're a bastard child, that's fine, but you do know that I was chosen by God from the foundations of the world. Because if you keep telling your mind negative things, your mind will eventually believe it. And David looks at this battle and he goes up to this and he says to Saul, um, I, I'm not going to fight for the prize of having your, your daughter and the king. I appreciate that. And it, it's not about the, the taxation because we don't fight for prizes. We fight for purpose. Because if you chase prizes, you'll never be satisfied. If you base your success on what you buy, you'll never be satisfied. If you base your life, health, or spirituality on where you live, you'll never be satisfied. Because you'll get one car and you'll feel it's not good enough. You'll get another car and you'll feel it's not good enough. But you've got to understand, I'm not fighting this giant for a prize. I'm fighting it because I'm purposed to do it. I'm not taking this job because it pays me this. I'm taking it because I've been called to it. I'm not doing this because I have to. I'm doing this because I've been called to. And David says, no, I'm not fighting for that. I'm fighting for purpose. And here it is, this most interesting thing. He goes up and he realizes that I saw, I'll go ahead and respect you and put this outfit that you want me to wear because I'm going to honor you even though I disagree with you. Because I don't have to dishonor you even though I disagree with you. And, and Saul says, okay, put this on. And he, he puts it on. And he says, you know what? I, I, I just can't do this because I, I'm not used to using this. And here's what David teaches us. You cannot use what has not been tested. You cannot fight with what has not been tested. Some of you got your grandma's armor on. That's why you can't move. You got your mama's armor on. That's why you can't move. Some of you are still living out vicariously your mama and daddy's dream. And you never realize that. God gave you your own dream and David recognized that I cannot go with what you've given me because it doesn't even feel right and you know what Satan does is he attacks our uniqueness when he recognizes we won't adapt to being like everybody else and you got to know that God uniquely made you for the battle that you're facing and if you try to be like Saul if you try to be like all the other Philistines you're going to lose to every giant that you face but David had a benefit he did not come compare his life through the lens of social media. He did not compare his happiness to how many friends he had. He did not compare his armor to how many people had different types of armor. He did not look at his rocks and say, well, my rocks ain't like their rocks. He did not look at slingshot and say, well, I don't got what they got. But David knew that God uniquely gave me what I have. And if I'm bow-legged, that's how God made me. If I'm thick, that's how God made me. You gotta learn 
how to fight with what God has given you and not try to be anybody else because God can't anoint who you pretend to be. He can only anoint who you really are. And David says within himself that I'm going to fight this battle because I am unique and different. You know why you can't find a replica? Because God didn't make another you. There's only one you. And David recognized that I am not Saul. I am not Jonathan. But I am David. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am made in the image of God. In the likeness of God. It is called the Imago Dei. It is the image of God. And David says, he says, I I'm going, I'm going to go fight him. I'm going to go fight him. Because I don't need what they need. And he understood that conflict creates an opportunity for courage. Here you need to understand this. If your knowledge of a person is based on a lie, then please shake hands with their shadow. Because here's the reality. What they were saying about David was not what was true. They were saying facts, but they weren't true. It may be a fact that you're sick, but the truth is God is a healer. It may be a fact that you don't have money, but the truth is God has all provision. It may be a fact you are not where you want to be, but the truth is you're not where you used to be. And David understood that very clearly. And here's what he says. He says this. He says, he says, I I'm going, I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. And you can give me the song I gave you yesterday. He says, I'm going to fight. And he says this, elevation is always searching for preparation. Elevation is always searching for preparation. If you want to be elevated, you got to prepare. If you want God, let me tell you, 2019 cannot be claimed by the lazy. 2019 cannot be claimed by the lazy. Elevation requires preparation. Elevation requires preparation. And David understood that my giant is not scary at all. It is there to intimidate me. Because did you read in the text? David had a stick. Y'all went to school, right? A stick means what? One. So all of a sudden, if you're this big guy, if you got all this power, if you got all this authority, why do you have somebody walking out ahead of you if you're fighting me, this little guy? All of a sudden, David realizes, well, wait a minute. Why are you telling me I have sticks, plural, when I have one? But now you're asking me to come close to fight you. I'm not going to fight you the way you want me to fight you. That's how all of us get low down. You cannot fight dirty with pigs and not expect to get muddy. I ain't going to fight you like you fight me. I ain't going to talk to you like you talk to me. I'm not going to do you like you do me. I'm going to do what God told me to do and take the high road. And here's what happens. David understood that the only reason why you want me to fight you close is because maybe you're sick. M maybe, maybe you suffer from what they call acronomaly. Giants in their day were big, but to compensate their genetics, they also had an issue with their sight. And so Goliath saw two sticks and he needed David to come close to him because he could not see him. And a lot of your giants can't see you. They just are threatening you because they understand that if you recognize that you have more authority than them, you can overthrow them. And David says, I ain't going to fight you like that. I already know there's something wrong with you because you got somebody leading you. And if you're bigger than me, then why you got someone speaking for you? Pause. Because a lot of times we got a lot of people doing talking for not the source, but they talking for somebody else. Because the main source don't have the courage to come at you. So they use a side piece to come at you sideways. And you can't get distracted by the sideways thing. You gotta pay attention to the main thing. And David recognized, wait a minute, there is something wrong with your sight. I ain't gonna fight you like you want me to fight you. And here's the thing. Saul had every part of himself covered. He had shields on his arm, shields on his legs. But the one place that he did not have protected was his head. 
and I don't care what happens in this year. If you don't protect your head, you're going to lose everything. If you don't protect this head, you're going to lose everything. I don't care what the economists say. I don't care what the doctors say. I'm going to keep my head covered. I don't care what happens. I'm going to keep my head covered. And, and here's what happens. David takes this. David doesn't even use five rocks. He uses rocks from a stream. Because everything that you need to fight your giant is already around you. Everything that you need to fight your giant is already around you. It's not behind you. It's not in your yesterday. It's already around you. And David grabs the rock and he flings the rock. Now, here's the thing. The speed of that rock is like most scholars believe a 45 caliber gun. And before Goliath could even think, he was on the ground. Because here's what David knew. I've been slinging this slingshot a long time. And he understood that all this was, was sometimes God creates a crisis to give you promotion. But you can't be afraid when crisis happens. You just got to do what you've been practicing. You just got to do what you've been preparing to do. And David steps up and slings. And now here's what he does. He grabs Goliath's sword and he chops his head off. Because here's the truth of it, y'all. Your enemy won't kill you. You will kill your enemy with their sword. Oh, you, you, you missed it. Some of you are shouting about making it through another year. That's good. But you should be thanking God that the enemies that thought they were going to kill you, they did not work against you. How many things were trying to stop you from moving forward? But you made up in your mind, I'm going to show up anyway. I don't know how I'm going to beat it. I don't know how I'm going to make it. I don't know how I'm going to pay for it. I don't know how I'm going to happen. But I'm just going to show up anyway. And that's what David did. He kept showing up. It don't matter what happens. Keep showing up. Here's what David does. Here's what happens. And we're closing. Give me more monitor, Don. Here's what happens. He realizes this that not all giants come to kill you. Some giants come to introduce you to who you really are. You can tell the level of your greatness by the level of the giant that you face. And the reason why none of them could fight that giant was because none of them had that level of call on their life. And some of you keep trying to fight other people's giants. You got enough giants of your own. I ain't got time to fight your battles. I'm trying to fight my own battles. I don't got time to worry about what you're doing in 2019. I got to fight what I got to fight. And most of you need to understand the weapons of our warfare. They're not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And I want you to do me a favor. Because a lot of times we're celebrating what God is doing, but we miss out on the fact that before the giant came, God sent you and put you in position to be called. Don't celebrate the victory. Celebrate the fact that he called you. Don't celebrate the victory. Celebrate the fact that he called you. And know this, that when everybody else was saying, David, you ain't good enough, God was saying, go ahead and show them what you got. Go ahead and show them what you got. Go ahead and show them what you got. When 2019 comes, here's what I'm telling you. Go ahead and show them what you got. 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 But pastor, my bank account is negative. Go ahead and show them what you got. But pastor, I'm sick in my body. Go ahead and show them what you got. Go show them what you got. Can I get 15 of y'all that will thank God in advance because you know that you know that you know that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every giant that tried to kill you should have killed you when they had the chance. You cross over to another year and there's no giant bigger than you, stronger than you, wiser than you, more powerful than you, greater, greater. So here I'm closing, y'all. Come on, would you give him a praise while you're in this place? 
Come on, open up your mouth and give it to him. You ain't give it to him all year long. This is the moment to give him what belongs to him. I am a giant killer. I am a giant slayer. I am the one to call. I am the one. 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 No, baby. No, baby. You've been, you've been asking everybody else to be David. Well, God is calling you to be David. Stop passing the buck to everybody else. You are the one. You are the one God called. You are the one God anointed to kill the giants that you see. My mama didn't make it out. My daddy didn't make it out. But you're the one. Your grandma had it, but you're the one. Your mama had it, but you're the one. Your brother had it, but you're the one. Your race had it, but you're the one. You're a giant killer. Because your giant is sick. He can only lie to you to try to get you to believe what isn't true. He can only tell you you're not good enough. He can only tell you you're not worthy. He can only tell you you're not pretty enough. He can only tell you things. But every time he tells you something, you tell him something. Every time he tells you something, you tell him something. Every time he tells you something, you tell him something. Listen. If this year you haven't given your life to God seriously, Your giant is already killing you. Your giant got his foot on your throat. There's no reason to live in sin and go to hell. And live in hell and then go to hell. But this new year is not about crossing over. It's about God transforming your heart. Because he gives us the gift to repent. And this would be the most amazing gift you give God, is to give God yourself. Our dance team's going to minister a song. We got some ministers in the aisle that got a sign that says, come to Jesus. And if you feel God speaking to you, I want you to come to this altar. I'll be here waiting for you. Our ministry team is coming. They're playing their music now. Come to Jesus. Don't wait till the end of the year.